G'day there guys, Airhead Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash I don't work here lady. Now if you don't work here either, I don't blame you, because I don't know what's going on. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode today, tell me what you think about it down in the comments, and enjoy all the stories. Posted by user, for fun woodworker. Titled, Not my job to clean your patient. First time posting on mobile, so please forgive for typos and grammar. This was a few years ago, but it's still very satisfying thinking about it. Backstory. I was a 24-year-old guy working as a mental health technician at a county hospital in Arizona. I was specifically trained and certified to work with teens, youth, adults, and elderly who were a danger to themselves or others. This included those that were brought in by the police for being violent and needed one-on-one -on -one supervision 24 hours a day. It's generally very boring and easy because the patient is sedated and strapped to the bed. The story is about one of these guys. A patient had been brought into the ER by the police for whatever reason, and had been extremely dangerous and violent with the police and hospital staff. I had been requested to go to their wing of the hospital. We normally only work in the mental health ward, and monitor and restrain if needed for the hospital staff. I was stilling in the corner of his room, on my phone, probably playing games, when a nurse came in to check on him. The conversation went something like this. The nurse said, I'm gonna need you to do something more than sitting there in the corner on your phone. Um, excuse me? I need you to clean him and empty his urine bag. Nope, I'm not trained to do that. Listen, I don't have time to deal with this. You're going to do this or I'm going to get the doctor. Do you see CNA? Certified nurse's aide on my badge anywhere? It says MHT, mental health tech. I am not certified to do a CNA's job. If I did clean him and change his urine bag but did something wrong, it would be your job and not mine. Go ahead, you can get the doctor and ask him yourself. And the nurse says, you have no right to tell me what your job is. I will have your job for this. She storms out of the room and looks for the doctor. After a few minutes, I can hear her voice just outside the room. I go just to the doorway, I'm still able to see my patient, to hear her and see the doctor. The nurse to the doctor says, He, pointing at me, is telling me that he won't do what I asked him just because he isn't a CNA. Me to the doctor says, She's telling me I have to clean him and change his urine bag, but I have told her that it would be her job if I did something wrong. And the doctor says to the nurse, He's right. He has no responsibility, nor is he certified to do it. He's supposed to sit with him and watch him, to keep you safe. Do your job and stop trying to find someone to do your job. It turns out that there was no CNA for her area that night. She was trying to push her work off on other people, and I was her last attempt until the doctor lost his patience. Posted by user, Mr. Music. Titled, Are You Colorblind? I was recently in a hardware store. The employees wear dark blue polo shirts with the company name embroidered on it. I was wearing a bright orange t-shirt with my company name in large letters across the back. I was looking at the safety glasses when I heard a middle-aged lady say, Excuse me, do you work here? Heh, <laughs> wow. I'm not even wearing anything close to what the employees are wearing, but she did ask very nicely. And I say, sorry, but I don't work here. Immediately, she apologized for bothering me. She was so sincere and nice about it, and I, having 30 years of retail experience, could not suppress all those years of service. I found myself saying, what are you looking for? Maybe I can help you find it. She said she didn't want to be a bother, but just could not find an item she saw in the store's weekly ad. I knew where the item might be, and a moment later, I had helped her find it. It was in a large box that looked a bit heavy. She said she had bad shoulders and asked if I could help lift it off of the shelf for her. I said I would do one better, and took it up to the register for her. She was so grateful, and kept thanking me for my help. She had another item that she wanted to find, and so I got the attention of an actual employee, and sent them off on a new search. I saw her again as I was leaving, and she thanked me again. I smiled and just said that I was glad to be of some help. We agreed that these little acts of kindness add up to make the world a much better place, and we all need that. 
Posted by user O Farm Boy, titled "Maskless Lady." This happened just yesterday, and my wife thinks it's appropriate for here. I was shopping at that expensive family clothing store named after a military branch. You know the one. The store is mostly empty because it's the middle of the afternoon, and because of you know what. Most people aren't out and about for shopping for no reason. Anyways, I was looking for some jeans at the front of the store because they were on sale. Mind you, I was actually wearing a pair of jeans, a plaid shirt, a vest, and a mask that all could have been from the store. As I'm searching for my size, this lady approaches with her phone to her ear and her mask in her hand. I pause what I'm doing and look over at her, and she says to me, "Do you know where the men's athletic shorts are?" No. Can you ask someone? No. Don't you work here? No. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry. Why didn't you say so? Because I was trying to figure out why you wouldn't put down your phone and put on your mask when talking with a stranger in public. The lady's face went from confused to horribly embarrassed. She immediately turned bright red, put on her mask, mumbled sorry, and headed straight out the door, sans shorts. I find jeans in the right size and head to the checkout behind me. The cashier has these big smiling eyes, and I can tell she is smiling behind her mask. She tells me the look on that lady's face was priceless. Have a great day. Posted by user Nemo Watches, titled "Oh, I'm quite certain I don't work here." I am a firearms instructor for a law enforcement agency. Generally, we don't get featured on TV shows or movies, so people aren't familiar with our uniforms. We usually wear khaki pants and a red polo with a sewn-on badge. Now, these uniforms don't have a bunch of identifiers like arm patches or logos because we don't get seen in public too much. But we do have the telltale heavy gun belt equipped with a firearm, taser, baton, etc. So while I try to never do this, being a father, I have to stop and pick up some items from a store. Usually, I get a call on the way home from the missus asking me for an emergency item. The closest store on the way home is a Target. You can see where this is going. So shopping in a Target while wearing khakis and a red polo is just asking for this. I understand this. So when someone walks up and asks a question, I generally will politely tell them I don't work there, or if I happen to know the answer, I will answer them. However, some people seem to want to cause problems, and things don't go as politely as I hope. First, I was trying to buy some shoelaces for my boy, and I clock a guy looking around for an employee. I hear him walking my way, so I look him up and down and make sure he isn't a cop hater or something. He walks up and asks, "Hey, you work here?" Gruffly, I respond, "No, sir, I don't." And he replies, "Are you sure?" I stand up and turn to face him. I say, "I'm extremely sure." He looks me up and down and stops at my gun belt. Then his eyes dart up to my badge. He pauses and thinks for a few seconds and says, "Oh, you don't work here." And finally walks away. On another occasion, I'm loading a heavy item into my cart when an older lady with a thick New York accent walks up and asks, "Hey, where's the dog food?" I replied, "I'm sorry, I don't work here. I'm..." She cut me off curtly and barked, "I didn't ask you that, did I?" I look at her, smile, and I say, "Of course, the pet supplies are over in that corner," and I point to the far end of the store. She looks over and huffs, "Fuh! All the way over there?" And she starts walking that way. Another young lady walks up to me and says, "I think the pet supplies are in the next aisle." I reply, "Oh, my mistake." This lady smiles at me and says, "Oh well," and keeps shopping. Posted by user Distinct Standard Three O Eight, titled "I'm Sorry I Don't Work Next Door." So I work for a martial arts studio. My husband is the instructor, and I answer phones, sell contracts, and do the marketing. We're in a nice plaza with a very popular restaurant on one side and a tutoring center on the other. Due to pandemic, we leave the doors locked and only allow people in if they have a reservation for the class. Students are only allowed in five minutes before their scheduled class. 
There's a large sign on the door that states our business name with a large logo. The text on the sign is large enough to be read by parents attempting to drop off on the curb. It states, no reservation, no mask, no entry. No one will be permitted inside until five minutes before scheduled class. Today, my husband went to the back to check stock on uniforms and get an inventory together for me, and left me up front alone to sanitize between classes. I'm masked up and spraying the air and all surfaces when someone tugs on the door. A lady and her son that I don't recognize were standing on the sidewalk looking at me expectantly. I figured they wanted information, so I grabbed my keys, walked outside, and I greeted them. I say, hello, welcome to the martial arts studio. How can I help you? And the lady says, we have an appointment for my son to take a placement test. Me, realizing they're wanting the tutoring center, says, oh, I'm sorry, this is martial arts studio. I think you're looking for the place next door. Well, their door is locked. Let me in so my son can take his test. We have an appointment. She then tugs on the door to our place. Look, I'm very sorry, but without a reservation to one of our classes, I cannot let you or your son in. We are a martial arts studio and not a tutoring center. You want the next door down, let me show you. I walked to the next door down and knocked on the glass to get the people inside's attention. The lady says, Just use your keys and let me in, or I'll take my business elsewhere. This is horrible customer service. I say again, I don't work for that company. I can't let you in or help you with that. I knocked again as the tutoring center is quite large. The young girl that works the front desk came out of the back and smiled at me and opened the door. And the woman says, it's about time. This woman would not let me in. She has the worst customer service I've ever experienced. I have an appointment. The tutoring girl says, she doesn't work here, but yes, come on in and I'll get you situated. I went back to work and told my husband, who wondered where I'd gone. Anticlimactic, I know, but it gave me a chuckle, so I thought I'd share. Posted by user Raddy Atkins, titled, I work at a petrol station, so I apparently work at all of them. This happened just this morning. I'm tired, so I'll keep it short. So I had to collect a jacket from a seamstress. I had to pop into a petrol on the way. Now, I've worked in petrol stations for years, and I still do. The last one had full American-style service, and I was the attendant for several years. I left that place years ago and went to another. As I was leaving, a little Toyota pulls in, and a woman of about 60 jumps out. OTL is old Toyota lady, and me is the night shift zombie. She says to me, Can you feel my car? I immediately spotted that she was talking to me. <sighs> my mistake. Old habits. I say, Ugh. I'm tired from not long ago finishing a night shift. I am a retail vampire. Come join us, the undead. <laughs> she says to me, Come fill up my car. She repeated, clearly annoyed. I don't work at this garage. I shouted back over the traffic noise. She says, you work at that one out of town? And? Please note, I'm tired, hungry, and have to complete my vital mission. You'd understand if you know the jacket's owner. Well, that means that you work at the rest of them then. I have read a load of I don't work here lady stories, and I don't want to go through the crap of Karen's, so no I don't, I say and I got in my car and drove off. There are traffic lights right outside the station's exit, and it's red. I heard her say, well, I never, and saw her take a picture of my car as I waited at the red. It turned green before anything happened. It's just the way she spoke, that tone that retail workers everywhere here before getting a migraine. I was too tired to give a damn, and besides, I didn't work there. Edit and update. This one took off. Okay, the update. The old Toyota lady did call in to complain. As in, she went to my station and called my manager. Not through corporate, but drove to my station and talked to the my manager who has worked there for 35 years. She takes no prisoners. She had to confirm it was me because I work solely nights, and that confirmed that I was off the clock. Not in uniform. 
My everyday is dress trousers, plain shirts, and a black frock coat. And the location of the incident, mainly not on our premises. She basically told her to grow up, stop wasting her time, and get out. She's met customers like this and knows they will be laughed out of the building no matter who she talks to. So, no Fs given. As for a few comments, full American service at my old job means filling cars with gas, glass cleaning, tire checks, oil top-ups, directory service, street names and business locations, and light emergency mechanical works, like blown lights, tire changing, etc. Posted by user Zik and Nougat, titled, No, the county is closed today. I get these types of calls quite often ever since the pandemic started. To make it more vague, I work call center. We answer questions about all kinds of benefits, but most times we transfer them to the right number to call, meaning I have no actual power over their cases. This is why I make sure to include the fact that I'm only an information line for my greeting, but so often this is ignored. The following conversation still cracks me up. I say, hi, thanks for calling, how may I help you? And Karen says, my money is not in the card. Okay, let's start off with your first and last name. I don't need to do that right now. I'm telling you my money didn't come in today. Look, yes, I understand you're frustrated, but in order for me to check your case, I'll need for you to state your first and last name. Ugh, well, fine, whatever. My name is blank. Okay, well, it looks like you're gonna have to call the county for this. You're not due for any renewals or anything, so you might just need to call the county to talk to them. Unfortunately, they're not open today. Oh my lord, this is ridiculous. What's their number? Well, it's blank, but again, like I said, they closed today. You might have to try on Monday. Well, that's not good enough. Look, I understand you're frustrated, but can't you just give me some emergency funds or something? I demand you give me emergency funds. What? No, ma'am, I'm not the county. Like I explained beforehand, the county is closed on weekends, meaning they're closed today. Then why are you answering calls today? Ma'am, I've explained this already. I'm not the county. We are an information line. The county is closed today. I'm not the county. Is there anything else I can help you with today? No. And she hangs up. The end. Posted by user Bananacoot, titled, I'm just going to ignore you if you try to talk to me. So this just happened. So I'm shopping around the ever-busy Walmart. Yes, I call it that. I'm wearing a jacket, a wool cap with a huge pom-pom on it, and I'm wearing my purse, and I have a cart full of stuff. I'm looking at pizza, and I hear someone say, Excuse me? I ignore it because why the hell wouldn't I? I grab my pizza and start to push my cart away. I hear, excuse me, again, and of course do my own thing. I'm walking and I hear the woman behind me repeating, excuse me, excuse me, but I keep walking. I glance behind me and I'm the only other person in this aisle than this woman and she's glaring at me. As I go to exit the aisle, I hear the woman shout, The people that work here are so goddamn rude! Like, lady, how do I look like I fucking work here? Edit, some people are asking, even PMing me. <laughs> are you that bored, lol? They're asking me why I ignored the woman, why am I so rude, etc. Look, I am shopping out on my own time, doing my own thing. I'm forced to put on a fake ass smile and talk to people all day at my job. When I'm on my time, I want to be left alone and will avoid speaking to people if I can. If you find this rude, that's fine. I find it rude to bug people when they are shopping. Also, I find 9 out of 10 if you think someone is talking to you, they aren't. But that's my experience. And edit 2. I compulsively check when I am out and about that my belongings are secure and my pants are covering my ass. And again, my first few thoughts were this woman wasn't even addressing me. If you think I'm rude for not swinging my head around every time I hear a noise and think it's directed at my fat ass getting pizza, that's cool. That's your thought process. 
My process was pizza, pizza, yum, yum, smiley face. All right, that's where I think I'm going to end today's episode, guys. As always, I really do hope you learned something or just really enjoyed the posts that were put up today. Quick shout out to all my new and existing Patreon and channel members. You should be able to see your name on screen right now. And if you don't, then I don't think you're part of the club. And you really should join the club because it's a great club. And I want to thank every single one of you guys for supporting me in this journey. It really means so much to me and I love you all so much for it. Thank you for helping me out. As you can tell, I'm now happy and healthy back in Australia. Thank God it's not cold like Ireland. <laughs> I don't like wearing jumpers everywhere. I prefer the heat. Thank you very much. I know that's an unpopular opinion. Anyway, guys, I really do hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you later. Bye.